Hi guys, welcome to session three. I hope everybody's safe and well. Now, what this session is going to be focusing on is balance. So, our ability to stay in a steady state or in control of our bodies. Yeah, so we're going to look at two sort of things a static and dynamic type of balance. Static when we stood still, and dynamic when we're moving our bodies to keep in control of our movements. Yeah, all got to do with our center of gravity, which is an imaginary point within our body that when I'm stood up, it's probably around our belly button. Yeah, now as I start to move, my center of balance starts to change. Now, what we've got to do is control ourselves and keep our center of balance within our body. Because if not, we will fall. And when we do fall, that's because our center of balance, that imaginary point, has fallen outside of our body. Now, what we're gonna to use today, we're gonna to use a little bit of more equipment. Now, this can be anything, again, along the similar lines of what I'm gonna show you. So, the first thing, a pillow or a cushion, make sure that if we are using this, we do ask permission first. I don't want anybody ruining uh, the best pillows or cushions around the house. Again, I'm going to use stuff that are going to be used as a platform, but I'm going to place certain items on. So I've got a variant, I've got a foam roller split on its side, kitchen roll, toilet roll, <laughs> not used. But also we've got, well, a couple of DVDs that I'm going to use later on in the session to try and kind of build our static and dynamic balances and also increase the difficulty. One last thing. But uh, always makes a special appearance, the smelly slipper. That is going to be involved as well. Let's get started. Right, so balance, it's all about keeping our bodies nice and stable and in control of our movements. And something called centre of gravity and centre of balance within our body, yeah? Because if it goes outside of our body, we tend to fall and that's when we do fall over. I use an example of when we're running and when we're sprinting, that all we're trying to do is keep up with the rest of our body because we're leaning forward, we're overbalanced, and then it's our legs trying to keep up with our body and that's why we're sprinting, and that's why we increase speed, to keep our body upright again, yeah? But that's how, that's an example of how acceleration works and how we use balance to increase the speed. Now, obviously we haven't got that space, but this is going to be the warm up to start off with. Now I'm going to place my slipper, it might be a piece of paper, it might be a book, on top of one of the poles, should we say. Now all I'm going to do, I'm going to do an inchworm. So an inchworm is where we stretch all the way out and then back in, keeping our legs nice and straight. Now that's going to work on our core, it's going to work on our stability and keep, we've got to keep ourselves balanced, yeah? So all we're going to do, we're going to walk it out, pick the item off, back to the start, and then back out again. So I want you to keep nice and strong, nice and stable, all the way back again. From cone, or should we say, same pole, from tall, all the way to small. Once you've been tall to small, all the way from small to tall. Now, if you've got more items, use more items, use more platforms dotted around your living room. Always keep it as a base, and your feet are always staying in the same place. But you might have different, varied platform sizes all around, so you have to work around like a clock. I've got limited space here, I'm trying to do it on the mat again. That's what I want to see. Keep nice and strong, keep nice and balanced, all fours, all the way out, all the way back in, transferring that item from platform or pole to pole. Continuing the warm up. Yeah, so all we're going to do this time, we're going to squat down. Now I'm stood on a pillow. If there's anything, you might have a beanbag at home, it might be a cushion. Again, ask permission from adults first because I don't want you ruining the favourite pillows or favourite cushions. But it won't be for long and it's just for your ankle stability. So, I'm going to start with two feet to start off with. I'm going to squat down. Again, lift the platform off. Place it on the next one. Again, I'm leaning slightly forward so I'm testing my balance a little bit. Yeah, the smaller the, ob the object, 
on the platform, the harder it's going to be. Again, I'm on that slightly uneven surface, so I'm testing my stability in my ankle and my knees. Now, the next stage of that, we're going to have one foot, so it gets slightly trickier. Now, we're going to try and keep balance all the way with one leg. Now, you'll start to see my ankle, my knees starting to shake, they're starting to quiver because my muscles are trying to constantly change my balancing stance, keep me nice and stable. Here we go. All the way to the end. Again, you can create a kind of clock if you've got enough items to pick it up and place it at different areas around the clock. Go clockwise, anti-clockwise, go alternate, you might have various objects balancing on each platform. Again, a good task. I could even use the chair arm up all over the place. Or even there. As long as I'm changing that position and challenging my balance. Now, once you've done it with one foot, swap legs, you will have one stronger side. Yeah, that is just part of it. But again, repetition, balance, creating that strength, creating that stability, your leg muscles, your core, even your upper body. Yeah, keep it nice and balanced, nice and, uh, nice and strong during these activities. Right, so I'm gonna use the pillow for this exercise again. Yeah, so we're moving into the activity stage. Now what we're going to work on, I'm going to call it the crane, yeah? So you are going to be the crane. Now we'll start on two feet to start off with. Now we're going to pick up the random items around the room. Now make sure that these items, if you do drop them, yeah, they're not going to cause damage to either the floor, anything around the area. So they're nice and light, like I've got a cereal box there. I know if I drop a couple of DVDs, the DVDs will still be all right because I've taken them out and put them elsewhere. Um, a couple of books as well, they're not gonna cause too much damage. Now, so what you have to do, start with two feet. All you've got to do, pick up using one hand. One hand is the balancing tool. The other hand goes down to collect. So again, different heights if we can. Balancing, creating the biggest tower as possible. Now this should be easy to start off with. Again, you can't take your feet off of that pillow. If you can't use the pillow or the cushion, yeah, just stand in that area and make sure your feet are glued to the floor. So again, I'm making sure that my arm is outstretched as possible, potentially using it as a bit of a counterbalance so I can reach all of the different objects around me. Now, the more objects, the more difficult it's going to be. Yeah, so I've got one more left. Reach right behind me. There we go, I've kept it nice and strong. Now, start again. Try it with the opposite arm. Now I'm gonna show you how we progress it now. So I'm just gonna shuffle all of these items just around my area again. Now, to make it difficult, really hard, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one hand this time. So one hand and one foot. So I've got that balance again. Now, try with the other hand before you go on to one foot of balance. But once you're on one foot of balance, choose that arm that you trust. So I'm going to choose my right arm. Again, my foot is already shaking, already twitching, trying to readjust my balance. Now, little tip, whoa, nearly went. Go for the most heaviest items first. Yeah, we we'll pick it up, whoa, nearly went. Using that leg as a bit of a counterbalance. Like so. Now, if you do fall and you step off, make sure you catch yourself. Yeah, because I don't want you falling into settees, sofas, TVs, even radiators. Make sure that you do catch yourself. It's not the end of the world if you fall off. So, once you've done that, even if you've collected only five, step off, replace them back to the start again. Try with that opposite hand again.
Right, picking up from the balancing technique, yeah? So we're keeping our bodies nice and stable. Again, we're gonna start on one leg, yeah? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna keep nice and balanced. Here we're gonna go. So we throw the socks, and we're gonna try, stay on one leg, but try and hit the target, whether it's a bowl, whether it's a, a plastic bottle, whichever it may be, but keeping on the kind of one leg, it's slightly suspense because we're absorbing and keeping nice and stable our legs and our muscles and our knees and ankle joints. Yeah? So once I've done that, I collect them all up again and then I'm going to try again on my opposite foot. Right, so we've done the warm up, we've done the activities and we've done one challenge. Now, what's been similar between all three of them so far? It's been that it's all been dynamic balances, yeah? So readjusting our bodies after each movement. Now, this is what's gonna happen. These two challenges are gonna be static balances. So we're gonna be testing and timing how long you can keep your position in one place a single time, yeah? So we're gonna start off with just one leg, yeah? Now I want you to write this down so you've got a bit of a comparison time between the two different static balances that we're going to do. And there's only one slight little difference, but it makes, it should make a big difference when it comes to the recorded times. Now, so the first one, all it's going to be, you're going to put your uh, heel to your knee, a little bit like a stalk, you're going to put your hands out wide. And you're just going to focus on the wall. Now get somebody to time you for as long as possible, Find that fixed point in your mind. Normally if you look at something still or focus on something still, it will help you stay balanced for longer. So once you've timed that, what if you do take a step off, if you do fall off of balance or move off of balance, yeah, stop the clock. There we go, time to scroll down. So that was on my right leg. This time I'm gonna do it on my left leg. Again, you might have a stronger side. If you have a stronger side, that is absolutely fine. Again, how we get to being both ambidextrous with both sides of our body is just through practice. And the younger we work that out and the younger we work on that, the better we're going to be in different sports as we get older. Now, once you've done that, you might find that really easy. You might be able to do that for a minute, a couple of minutes. This time, eyes closed. So, just make sure I would enjoy it a bit more if you were supervised in the room by doing this. Yeah, so make sure you've either got an adult or a sibling, either with the stopwatch or ready, just watching you, making sure you're safe. Make sure there aren't as many sharp edges around. So if I fall on, I'm gonna fall onto this quite soft box and this quite soft set here, yeah? Or even the floor. Yeah, it's quite soft there as well. But make sure we're not doing it anywhere near any radiators or TV stands, t televisions, chairs, sharp objects. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to get into this stalk position again. Whichever starting foot you want, close your eyes. Now what you'll feel is you'll start to wobble and you'll start to twitch and you won't be able to last as long. So again, once you've done it on one side, swap over. Again, as soon as you take that vision away, that's when it starts to become a little bit more difficult. Again, show your progression, track your progression, What's it like from when you're open, you've got your eyes open, but also when you close your eyes as well. And why do you think you feel that? Well done guys, that was session three completed. All to do with balancing, static balancing, where we keep still in a still position, a static position for as long as possible. Also, we've looked at dynamic balances where we're constantly on the move, keeping our bodies in control and keeping that center of balance within our bodies so we don't fall over. Really, really important. So I put this in a sporting context, yeah? Now, it's all to do, and it can be all to do with our coordination, our agility, but also if we're becoming strong sprinters, if we're changing direction in all different types of sports, either with or without a ball, we have to maintain balance for our movements to be powerful and sharp, which is really important in a large majority of sports where that power and speed 
allow us to get allow us to get a space or a yard of space to get a shot, a pass, or even dribble further away. Now, example: I'm a sprinter. If I am not balanced during my drive, I cannot apply my full amount of power straight forward. Yeah. So you look at Usain Bolt, Johan Blake, all the quickest sprinters in the world. They are poised, they are strong, and their movements are so stable. So when they drive forwards, they are keeping a good dynamic balance, which allows them to use all their force, speed, and power in the right way, in the right direction. So they're not wasting energy on leaning forwards, backwards, or even wasting any milliseconds going from side to side in that wobble. Really important skill. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Carry on staying safe. Till next time.